We are live for another episode of COVID Cast JA Business. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all our viewers. It's episode 62, and today we're talking about insurance and risk in business. For those of you who are joining us for the first time and you are wondering, if you're at episode 62, I may have possibly missed 61 episodes. You would have missed 61 episodes. 61 episodes of education, of training, of great information that you can utilize in your business. And you're wondering, where do I get this information? Where do I find these episodes? Follow us on Facebook. All of our episodes are on our Facebook page, as well as on smallbusinessportal.com, which you must ensure that you save right away. Because also on smallbusinessportal.com, you will find the written memo that supports our episode. So we not only bring you the episode where you interact with our experts, but we prepare information that you can print, have on hand, and you can utilize in your business. This episode and all our episodes are brought to you by the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica. And COVIDcast, the information we bring, is supported by our partners, the NCB Group and the JMMB Group. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, tonight we're talking about insurance and risk in business. And I know that this summer is very hot, so you're saying to yourself, insurance and risk in business. You know how insurance is? Sometimes you have some insurance agents calling you, and you, don't, you stop answer them. Because you say, we have one life insurance already. We can't bother with no life insurance right now. And sometimes we start thinking that insurance is limited to life and health, and we're not thinking about even the importance of those types of insurance to us as business people, but also the other insurance that is very relevant to us that we need to be considering as business persons. And as we're assessing risk in business, we've gone through almost a year and a half of this pandemic. And this is a risk that most of us would never have thought about. Now that we are here, we have to say to ourselves, how do I plan differently in the future? And the things when the insurance agents used to come or they come under the presentations and I yawn through the presentations. Now I have to stop and say to myself, but really, how am I going to change the face of the risk profile of my business utilizing insurance? And what do I need to learn about insurance and risk in business? And I'm not the expert tonight. Mm -mm. Tonight, we have two experts with us and we're going to be joined firstly by Christian Watt, who is a general manager, marketing and production of Iron Rock Insurance. And Christian has been kind enough to also provide to us great information for this week's SME memo. So please go straight to smallbusinessportal.com. Just download it so you just have it on hand. Now, Christian is actually a results-oriented strategic business development professional with over 15 years experience in the insurance industry. He has been a chartered insurance practitioner for over 10 years, and he holds an MBA from the Mona School of Business, where he specialized in banking and finance, as well as a bachelor's from the University of the West Indies in mathematics. He has worked in various segments of insurance, um, commercial and personalized, to sales and marketing, to underwriting and in each of these roles, he has received extensive training in risk assessment, risk management, sales, portfolio management, business operations, and finance. We have an expert. In 2017, he returned to Jamaica to take up the role of general manager for marketing and production for the then, then newly launched Iron Rock Insurance, where he's responsible for the company's sales and marketing, as well as managing their distribution channels. So you can get out your pen and paper because we are going to talk with Christian. How are you, Christian Watt? I'm doing better than I deserve. How are you, Rochelle? <laughs> Maga use that line. I'm doing better than I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, Christian, um, as, as an insurance practitioner, I know when this topic of insurance comes up, a lot of persons kind of glaze over, their eyes glaze over, and they're like, oh, yeah. I have health insurance, and I'm going to take out one life plan. But I don't want to talk about the other the value of these plans, but also specific business insurance. Right. And before we go there, tell us a little bit about Iron Rock and some of the services that you offer. 
Right, sure. Um, well, Iron Rock, we are the uh, newest guy on the block, the newest kid on the block um, as a local general insurer. We launched in 2016, listing on the junior stock exchange. So we are publicly traded. Um, and we launched with a view to bring efficiency and simplicity to a market that had become, you know, dogged with age old insurers that, you know, sometimes get a little bit bloated and bureaucratic. And so we just thought to ourselves, let's try and bring an insurance company, a general insurer that can simplify the process, utilize the technology at hand and grow and scale with technology um, to provide our services, you know, uh, which is general insurance and so not life and health, but property insurance, car insurance, home and of course, business classes of insurance. Well, when, um, you know, in these, this business type insurance um, for our small, medium enterprises, um, some of them may be saying, but this sounds like it's something for big business. It's for businesses with at least two, three stories worth of business and a certain number of employees. This couldn't be for my small operation. Um, why business insurance? What's the value of us having business insurance? So I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. And that's probably the biggest misconception that our um, MSMEs have that it's a line item for big corporations, um, but it couldn't be more the opposite. So small businesses and MSMEs don't have the financial capacity typically um, to withstand significant financial shock. The big businesses are the ones with huge, you know, uh, cash line items on their balance sheets and can withstand, you know, a significant property loss or a significant lawsuit. They can actually make it through one or two of those events without insurance. And so um, for them, insurance has become a part of their risk strategy. But um, for small businesses, it's important that you recognize that, listen, there are some things that will set me back or tank my business at this stage of my business that I can actually protect with insurance. And, you know, people think that it's this massive expense, um, you know, that that's going to sink your business in the first place just to, to spend it but there are lots of opportunities to finance the premium um you know coming out of covid last year we actually came out with 12 month credit plans um for premiums last year just to help because we recognize that there are a lot of businesses that would be um struggling to meet their needs to pay for their car insurance or their property insurance um but yeah it's Small businesses can't really withstand those significant shocks yes. and they, have, they don't have the financial capacity to do it. Yes, I see Robert Richards. Good evening, Robert. Welcome, welcome. In terms of business insurance, though, what are the main types of business insurance that we should even be contemplating? Right. So, again, what we want to do is the way we look at um, business insurance, particularly for small businesses, is on a very practical uh, approach, a very, how am I running my business approach? Because we won't forget that Iron Rock was too a startup. We may have listed on the stock exchange, but five years ago, we were a startup with a $1 revenue, right? And so, you know, we look at our small businesses and speak to them the same way we think about our business, because you are selling a product, selling a service. You have to treat risk management as this, everyday activity that you do in order to navigate your business. Um, so you want to think about the activities that would cause a significant financial stress to your business, like losing some stock to a fire or a burglary or an earthquake or hurricane, or, um, you know, a slip and fall of a customer inside your store. If let's say you're running a retail store, or an employee injuring themselves on the job. You have a warehouse and somebody picks up something that's too heavy. So you want to think about property insurance and liability insurance as kind of the first two introductory type policies, you know, baseline policies for your small business. And certainly liability would be at the top of that list. Okay, and we know that we, we need to talk, because when we use big word, we know what property is. Right. And we, hear about liability. we hear people talk about liability. What is liability insurance? And you know, sometimes as a small business, you'll get contracts from from um, 
corporate from other corporates right. that will say you need to have public liability insurance. All right. A little bit about that. All right. So your liability as a business that's operating, you know, you you have people coming to your premises or you are going to customers' premises to, to execute your service or deliver your product. In doing that, accidents can occur. You know, somebody can come into your business and slip on a wet floor and hurt themselves. And legally under the courts, you would be responsible for their injuries. You would be liable for their injuries. Similarly with your employees. If your employees are coming to work every day, you have a responsibility to take care of your employees. And so if they're injured doing their work, then as a result of the company's negligence, so the company hasn't provided the correct tools to use, the company has not given the proper training to use the equipment and then an, uh, an injury results. The company is responsible to pay for those injuries and those are can be significantly unquantifiable. Those are the ones that can sink a business. Mm -hmm. um, and so liability insurance is, is designed to protect those types of losses where somebody gets injured that's external to your business or somebody's property external to your business that you are responsible for that you have damaged in executing your, your business function or your business operations. Okay. And in terms of property insurance, um, if I am, for example, leasing the premises that I'm operating my business from, right. um, so I've leased a two-story building, can right. I get property insurance for that building um, or is it only if I own the building? Well, that boils down to what's in your lease agreement with your landlord. So there are some landlords that will put in the lease agreement that the lessee, you, the business owner, is required to insure the building as part of the lease agreement. Um, I, I think it happens, you know, 50-50. You know, half the time, the landlords will say the insurance is included on their side of the contract, and half the times the landlords. And it really depends on the commercial contracting capability of the two individuals or the two businesses. Um, but certainly where you're leasing a space and we're talking about MSMEs. So, you know, retail shops or a small eatery or a cafe or something like that have rented a spot. Certainly when you rent a space, you outfit it with your business's um, improvements, you know, counters and tiling. Those things can be insured. Those are your property. And so you have a insurable interest, an insurable interest to insure your tenants' improvements or your leaseholders' improvements to the property so that if there's an earthquake, you can recoup some of the money that you spent in outfitting this, this property. Or if there's a fire, the landlord will get his money from his insurance, but what about your stuff inside there? His insurance does not cover your business. Yes. And, and that's very interesting that you mentioned this question, because, you know, sometimes as business people, even those leases, we kind of gloss over the insurance clause and we go fast, fast, fast to how much, how long the lease yes. is for, how you come out of the lease, and also what the actual lease payments and how the percentage increase. And we say insurance, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. we just sign away. But we haven't even taken into consideration things like insurance and whether or not um, our lease arrangement is, is protecting us in any way. All right. All right. And, and, and with insurance, so we've talked about property and liability insurance. And um, what other critical insurance is there for businesses to consider? So the other types of business insurance would uh, be the, the classes that would protect all the other little operations of the business. Um, of course, we have motor vehicle insurance. You know, that's a broad category. But in the perspective of a business, if you have delivery vehicles yeah. or a fleet of, you know, staff vehicles, uh, you know, manager management vehicles, so you have motor vehicle insurance. Mm -hmm. um, but then you can also purchase cash insurance. So you can actually insure the physical cash in the store um, for loss against burglary. Um, if there's a fire at the store and the place has burned up and you had cash in a safe and the safe is gone, you can insure that. You can insure the cash in transit to the bank. So you've sent your bearer to make a deposit at the bank of today's sales or of yesterday's sales. You can cover the bearer's transit to the bank or from the bank. Let's say you went, you sent to the bank for payroll. You're paying some contractors or for petty cash. 
So you're keeping $50,000 of petty cash in store or in your business. You can actually buy a cash policy that will protect the transit of the cash as well as the cash on the premises. Um, you can also cover your goods in transit. So if you have a business where you have to bring stuff off the wharf or you're delivering stuff to customers, you can cover the goods while they're on the truck in case the truck crashes, turns over, is looted. You can actually get insurance to replace everything on the truck. Um, and that's called goods in transit. Yes. Uh, another common one is employee fraud. It's called fidelity guarantee. Um, but as I said, we like to keep everything simple at Iron Rock. Um, so it's employee fraud is what we cover. So uh -huh. let's say somebody embezzles from you. They're kiting from the till. They, they're, they're kiting stock from the warehouse, you know, um, doing a little roast on the side and you find out, you can actually recoup the lost amount through a, a, a fidelity um, guarantee policy yeah. which covers fraud. Okay. So, Christian, that is, you know, as our SMEs are listening mm -hmm. and they're saying to themselves, because um, I didn't even realize that you can actually insure your cash. So, you know, if the cash, if you've insured it, if anything happens, you don't have to say, well, I don't know. And right. cash king, you, you have something in place. Correct. As or as our SMEs are thinking through and they're saying to themselves, you know, well, you know, sometimes you have these insurance in place and, you know, you pay the policy every every month, they pay policy and nothing happens. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, do, should I even be contemplating this? Should I keep doing it? I mean, I could have really do well with that policy money, you know, of course, like a paying out money. So. Of course, and I think one of the biggest mistakes that our MSMEs get into or the traps that they fall into when buy, when they've actually made up their mind that I need to buy insurance for this business. Somebody told them, some consultant or some friend or some advisor said, you don't have insurance, go buy some insurance. And they just go out and buy. Um, insurance works extremely well when it is done right. And insurance is a pain in the you know what when it is done wrong. When you just buy an insurance, oh, I'm a buy an insurance for my business. When you do it that way, it's a pain in the butt. Nobody, it doesn't work. It doesn't pay what you expected. You pay more than you wanted to in your premiums and you don't get what you expected. How our approach to it is really a very, very practical one. And, and we encourage all small businesses to just think about the insurance path in a practical one. You don't have to buy every policy. Now, I'm going to say, I, I guess I can't say it quietly on Facebook, right? I, I, I see you're going to hear me. You don't have to buy every policy, though. It's actually something we practice here. We're not trying to sell you cash insurance and fidelity guarantee and liability and property and goods in transit just because we can sell you a policy. What we want you to do is really think about your operations and think about what you can withstand and you know, whether it makes sense to save the, and believe it or not, the cash insurance can cost you $30,000 a year, $40,000 a year. Mm. You know, can I can I save that $30,000 because the $100,000 that it's covering me for, eh, I can manage to replace a loss like that. I can manage my bearer getting held up for $100,000 and losing that cash. I can bounce back from it. If you feel you can bounce, you're a small business. You have to you know, manage every dollar and every expense. If you can put aside funds and create a little kitty reserve for yourself to manage some of the smaller risks, don't insure it. We're not, I will be the first guy to tell you, don't insure everything, right? Mm -hmm. But what you want to do is you want to kind of highlight and rank those losses that would be so significant to your business that one, it would either set you back to you to the point where you can't continue or it would you know um significantly put you back or shut you down so we always put the liability ones pretty high because you can't really quantify the the cost of somebody getting hurt in your business so that could be a five hundred thousand dollar claim that could be a 15 million dollar claim and as a small business you get hit with a bill for 15 million mm -hmm. um, that can shut you down um, so always consider those at the top of your list. But then the ones that you can quantify, you quantify them and say, okay, how much do I need to purchase? I have a storeroom with a million dollars of stock in there. 
Yes. If, uh, if a flood comes and destroys the stock, or if there's a fire, I don't have money to buy back the million dollars of stock. I have nothing to sell. Well, go and purchase the insurance for the million dollars of stock. Purchase the property insurance. Mm -hmm. But if you can withstand, if you have controls in place to yeah. withstand employee fraud, you know, you have your checks and balances that, I mean, and remember, if a man going to thief you, you're going to thief you. But you mm -hmm. want to have your checks and balances in place that you're going to catch it before in thief too much. Yes. If you're confident and comfortable with those checks and balances to say, listen, if they thief me, I know I'm going to catch it by the time it reach 100,000. So I can manage that. Then don't come to us and buy a Fidelity. And don't let somebody sell you a Fidelity guarantee policy that you don't need, that you can save the money. Right? Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with a business where, you know, you said potentially one of my team could, you know, defraud us for $2 million in two transactions, then that's the time you want to kind of consider, oh, maybe I need to insure this because I don't want to withstand $2 million in such a small space, you know? Um, and so that's how we like our small businesses to think about buying insurance. Yes. And, and, and that is a very important process, even as we're thinking through, because that process also helps us to identify some of the key risk areas of the business and, and what we really need to be protecting in our business. So, you know, when we were all going along quite well. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the beginning of 2020, it was 2020, um, people's stock, stocks were, you know, the inventory was high, we were expecting people to be spending and doing, and yeah. then boom, March, COVID. And we said, no, we know about flu and them something there. So, yeah, there were a lockdown, but by June, we're free, we're yeah. back on the road, we're back on the street, and it is now July of the following year. We have some relaxation of the curfews. Some of us know that we still have to stay in our yards, yeah. whether vaccinated or not, and we need to be masked up. Through this time, this unprecedented, unpredictable time, um, just switching gears a bit, in terms of the risk consideration for businesses and, and some of the key even insurance thoughts that businesses needed to have or should be having in the going forward. What are some of the key learnings you've had and you've been able to help your clients with? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, one of the biggest things that came out of the whole pandemic, of course, from the insurance sphere was that it was something that was not contemplated not uh, considered or priced out and not included in, in many or most products, certainly not in the local market, internationally as well. But there was no coverage in place for pandemic. There was no pandemic in you. There still isn't a pandemic insurance. It is, uh, it's too difficult to um, assess the exposure. We just don't have enough data on it yet. And that's why we just don't have a product yet. Um, and I'm sure we have many, many teams around the world, you know, at the reinsurers uh, in the various um, markets across the world working on products for it. But um, it just didn't exist in any ubiquitous form like property insurance for hurricanes. And we have lots of data on how hurricanes and expected damage of our models and all of these things. So the pandemic kind of highlighted that, hey, something can come out of left field and it's not sufficient to just say oh i buy a set of insurance policies and move on what we have found is that it's very very important for businesses to really walk through a risk management process and i don't want the risk management for the small businesses the teams of 10 people and less to feel like it's this daunting thing that you have to bring in a consultant and they're going to be matrices that you're you know, it's not that. It is risk management is everyday stuff. You know, you're going to cross the road at this intersection or that intersection. Why do you cross it on the street and not on the corner? That's a risk management decision in your personal life. Apply that sort of critical thinking to your business where, okay, I'm collecting cash in my business. Should I clear my till at 50,000, 100,000, 300,000? You are practicing risk management when you think about that. And when you set a policy in your office that says when the till reaches 50, clear it and put it in the safe. Mm -hmm. You have just almost eliminated the need to buy cash insurance. 
So you have practice risk management. Insurance is supposed to be a cog in your risk management wheel. It is just one of the tools that you must use, you know, where you can avoid a risk, you avoid it. Where you can reduce it, you reduce it. And where you have to work with it, you can transfer it to an insurer. So we've learned that the businesses that have been able to make it through the pandemic and uh, pivot and come through are those that stepped back, looked at their business operations and said, okay, I can't go to office. Okay, we have to wear masks. Okay, I have these amount of staff that have this challenge. How can I find a way to operate my business in those challenges? And that's all risk management really is. Well, thank you. And as I see Dr. Sweet said, good evening, everyone. Very good points on risk management. So she's way ahead of me. Um, Camille, what, Camille you, you were thinking the way I was thinking. And, um, and Christian answered that question. Is there insurance to assist businesses during a pandemic? Not yet. Not yet. Robert Richards now asks us, he says, you use an example of $1 million of inventory. Mm -hmm. What is a percentage estimate that one would have to buy to ensure that? Also, would a customer get back the full value of the insured amount, or would we be getting the usual clauses like excess, etc.? Great, that's a great question, um, Robert. Um, yes, so all insurance policies come with clauses. There are deductibles or excesses, as you mentioned. The deductible is the amount that the the client has to stand in the, in the event of a claim. Um, and that's usually a small percentage of the value. Um, if you've ever been in a car accident or had to make a claim, claim on car insurance, you have experienced the deductible as a percentage of your car's value. Um, so we have these things in place. We have clauses like the average clause in place. Um, you know, if I'll do a little plug, if you check out Iron Rock, we have some, how does the average clause work? on our Instagram as well. Okay. Um, you can see how that clause works. We break it down really, really simple. Um, the trick to it and what we always do, because we have customers who um, willingly or acknowledge that they're going to take a value that's lower than they should, and they acknowledge the impact that it's going to have for a deductible. The whole point of this thing is to just, as I said, assess it and be aware of it. If you know your deductible is going to be 2% of the value, then we should have no argument at the time of a claim. The issue is when we have people buying policies and are not being informed of what the particular clauses are. For a price like a million dollars, property insurance now is running um, as a fraction of 1% of the value. So depending on the type of inventory, where it is, um, you know, the, the entire size of the business and the size of the portfolio, that can range, people are paying anywhere from, you know, uh, three quarters of 1%, and then there's some stock values and dangerous stock, hazardous stock that may go a little over 1%, 1.2%. But you're not gonna spend 10% of, there's no property insurance charging 10% and 15% of um, the value of goods. So it's always about in the one percent region on a, a little bit on either side. Okay, thank you very much for that. And I see Damaris is asking about. She says, "What about things like IP insurance?" And Robert says, "Thank you. You're welcome, Robert." You're welcome, Robert. IP insurance. That's a great question, um, Damaris. So. The market here locally, there are specialist insurance, there are special types of insurance policies that the capital to, to support them is very limited globally. Um, certainly in Jamaica, our general insurance market is very focused on what we would call the traditional classes. So your property insurance, your liability insurance, your motor, and things like your accidents, like uh, loss of cash, loss of goods in transit, things like that. Um, IP insurance would be something um, I'm presuming she's talking about somebody protecting their right to their intellectual property. Exactly. Um, somebody infringes on it and or or the other their own. Yeah, where you infringe on somebody's um, IP. Correct. So there, there's there there are extended liability insurances available in the global market that will extend to cover advertising liability and things of this nature. Um, so it's available. 
it's usually because it's usually very specific um, and specialist, it usually requires a specific application form for a handful of underwriters in some corner of Europe or something like that that are going to pour over it and give you a, a tailor-made rate. It is done on an individual ad hoc. It's not a pick it up off the shelf okay. purchase like home insurance or car insurance. Okay. And um, just taking, following on, on Damaris's question, but looking now at reopening of, of the economy, you know, mm -hmm. relaxation of curfews. So we see a lot of events happening and, and people feel like they did lock up long time so they want to hit the road and boogie woogie down. We can't yep. just like, oh, say boogie woogie. <laughs> but, <laughs> No, no, as, as it, someone in the events industry, as an example, um, is staging an event, they follow the COVID protocols, the number of persons to be in a particular venue. Um, are event promoters supposed to be thinking about things like liability insurance for persons within a particular space? Of course, um, 100%. And I would definitely say in our experience that the the very established players um, certainly do, and they certainly purchase uh, adequate liability insurance now in case there is, you know, a quote not quote a stage collapse yeah. and an injury. So we do have we do have products like that available. We do a fair whack of it, and we, in fact, we do for quite a number of of smaller uh, promoters from time to time. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be the huge promoters that get through. Um, but again, those are done on a very individual basis. We want to have a conversation and a, and a quote unquote interview with the promoters to say, what's your experience in it? Where is the venue? How many people? What does the security look like? Um, what does the day's activities or the night's activities look like? So we want to understand the type of event, certainly a festival in the day very different from a soca party at night um those type of risk exposures and so we you know can rate it accordingly um there is even event cancellation insurance we've done a couple of those and the promoters could think about that our experience with it though is event promoters are by nature risk takers and they practice a lot of risk management in putting on their event you know um, they have a lot of plan Bs. Mm -hmm. if, you've ever, if you've ever been involved in any form of event putting on, the event planner always has, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to do this. And so inevitably, they always have pretty decent backup plans for when something fails or doesn't work. Yes. Um, unfortunately, our event cover still doesn't include pandemic issues okay you, know, you saw me go in there yeah. i was like so we need to no okay but certainly we've had issues where you know you're having an event at a location and the the night before um an underground pipe bursts and the location floods out and you have to relocate so now you have this cost that you didn't plan on to relocate and the insurance covers that cost okay. or you know, an artist, we do artist cancellation. So if an artist doesn't show up, again, um, non-pandemic reasons, but doesn't show up, misses their flight, things like that, and we have to pay a fee for a refund of tickets or something like that. So those covers are available. Again, it's a small market, it's very specialized. Um, and so, you know, people reach out and we assess them literally on a one-by-one -one basis. Yeah. And and that's you really interested us in in insurance, Christian. You know, because a lot of the times we, we had a very myopic view of insurance that's available. We don't even want to have the conversation because it's got hard. And then mm -hmm. we talk about average class and it's people and we don't understand any of those things. Um, from a, the perspective of a small business, we want to come in, we want to have a conversation about our industry type of business and to get some advice and guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, how hard is it to get this? Is it a headache? Is it just, no. I mean, be worth too much of my valuable time that I could be billing clients? No, 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 no. So it's, it's insurance is 
it's fairly, again, once it's done right, it works very, very, very well. And so it's important to talk to somebody. Don't just go and buy a policy um, on your own. Go and talk to, you know, have a conversation with the representative or the agent that you're speaking to. Go and find a broker. Go and talk to a broker or an agent who can provide guidance as well. Call us um, and tell us about your business and let us walk through the steps of, do you need this? No, you're wasting your money buying that. Or you don't need this. Oh, you definitely need that in this business. You're, we, I've seen so many cafes or small restaurants buying public liability insurance and not purchasing products liability insurance. And to me, you're selling food. You bought public liability thinking that, well, I bought public. Anything happened to the public, I'm okay. But public liability is not going to cover unless you have bought products, it's not going to cover if somebody gets sick from the food that you serve. It's going to cover if somebody slips and falls in your restaurant or turn over on a chair or something like that. But you provide a meal that happens to, you know, get somebody sick, the policy doesn't respond. And the additional amount to cover is so negligible, but it's really just about having the conversation with, um, with your representative we are here where we love we love having we are insurance nerds we love yeah. having those conversations with the customers i love to learn about new businesses all of my team here loves to hear about how your business operates and want to know where this machine go what that machine put out how you serve your client we want to understand it so that we can really sell you just what you need okay no, Christian, this has really been such a great conversation. You know, as we started out, insurance is a lot of times we spend running away from our insurance agents and we, we just like, I can't bother with that right now. We're in a pandemic. You can't expect me to be thinking about this now. Yeah. As we are wrapping up and we're still seeing, oh, me like Christian, you know, me like, me like when I talk about and it sounds like something I should be thinking about, but man, it's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Could be this year that I should be thinking about it. What are those key points that you want to leave with our MSMEs? You said that insurance is a cog in the wheel of risk management. As, mm -hmm. as, as prudent business persons, what should be clicking through people's heads right now? So I think if I had to choose one thing to leave this um, session with um, and this podcast with, it's... As a business owner, as a, as a small business owner, just take a step back, take, take a day, think through your business and think about the unfortunate events that would cause significant financial strain. So just think through your operations. I'm not talking about going and learning how liability insurance works. Just talk to you, think about how you serve your customers or how you sell your product or service, the, the actual process flow. They walk in the door, they pick this up, or I send a waiter to them. Just think about the actual activities that you do every day and then say, okay, if this person got hurt or if I wasn't able to do this because there was a fire, if I didn't have any goods to sell, you know, I lost them, they were stolen from me. Just think about the spend a little time doing some worst case scenarios and say, how much of a setback would that be? And just rank it, just rank it to say, no, I could manage somebody robbing my tail. I can afford that. And you just put that to the side. They say, no, um, I don't keep that much stock on hand. I do just in time and I order. So I don't need to insure any stock. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I spent $2 million fixing up the store. If there's a fire, I kind of want the $2 million back write that one down. If somebody slip and fall and they are going to sue me for, or eat my food and get sick and sue me for $5 million, I'm going to want to cover that. Yes. Just think about your business activities and write down the potential things that could cost you and then call us. Well, thank you so much, Krista. You see me, the, the wheels in my head are turned because I'm there making some mental notes mm -hmm. of that process flow. Ladies and gentlemen, really, we have to give um, much thanks to Christian Watt, General Manager of Marketing and Production of Iron Rock Insurance, who has taken us along that way of considering risky businesses and the importance of insurance in our business. Christian, thank you so very much. Thank you thank for you. having me. <laughs>
And our next guest is a gentleman, Antonio Spence. And let me give you a quick personal story with Antonio. I saw a presentation that Antonio did about insurance and he's talking about life insurance. It takes you through a very practical um, set of scenarios. And as soon as I got home, I started taking, I took out all of my insurance policies and started going through them and really assessing risk for my own life and in terms of myself as a business person. And tonight we are joined by Antonio, who is Senior Assistant General Manager, the Head of Pensions, Client Management, and Business Development of NCB Insurance Agency and Fund Managers Limited. Hi, Antonio. Now, Antonio, you see me give Antonio a plug already because he already did do a little change for my own life. Antonio has provided a wide range of insurance, banking, and investment advisory services to corporate and individual clients for 20 years and has held senior management positions in the insurance and banking industry. He has been integrally involved in the growth and development of NCB Insurance Company and NCB Insurance Agency and Fund Managers from all the way in 2006 to present. He has responsibility for the pension, creditor life and employee benefits business of the company. Antonio, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for <laughs> welcoming me, Rochelle. What's up, what's up, what's up? Wow, and it's always, always a pleasure. Now, you would have heard, heard that you would have been backstage and you heard some of what Christian spoke yes. about. Any thoughts, you know, of, of what or every because you know, all kind of things running through we head now, like that we need to be thinking about. I know you're coming to tell us about employee, um, about health insurance and life insurance right. benefits. And we say, oh, wow, what, yeah. what where do you want to start your conversation with us to settle us to take us on this path? All right, so so the first thing I would say, of course, good other than first, like good night to you, Rochelle, <laughs> and good night to the viewers and listeners. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd start by saying I, I typically like to keep things super, super simple, mm -hmm. right? And um, I mean, the, the, the issue of managing business risk um, is one that is multifaceted. To be honest with you, Rochelle, it takes on many dimensions. Um, we would have just had a discussion around some the, the risk regarding the tangible assets. And um, we also need to look at the people side of the thing, um, which is where the health and life component happens. Because the MSMEs, this is, this is the person and the persons and the staff and all of those elements that go into driving the dynamic, the many dynamic businesses that we, that we see. And yes. so I would say, let's, you know, as an MSME, you, you perhaps may start from the perspective of wanting to understand what sort of the most important set of things to get done from a business risk perspective on a tangible asset side with general and also on the life side. And so I would say we start there. So thank you very much for that, Antonio. Our producers, I know we have some um, visuals that you will kind of, you'll guide us through as we're looking sure. at business risk and how insurance help. Sure. So, help, sir. Um, yeah, so, right. can we go to the next slide? Sure. All right. So, so, of course, on the life and health, well, let, let's start firstly by some of the risks that they would face. So, we spoke about some of the the tangible elements i mean msmes and of course businesses that are a little larger um they all sort of have different levels of risk um as they evolve um some need just straight up cash to be able to you know meet the uh, payroll on a day by day um you know others have issues in relation to um, needing to pull in the sort of staff that they would like you have yet others that are concerned with um, being able to transition the business in the event that something happens to the owner. As a matter of fact, a lot of businesses have that particular issue, yes. right? And so um, I want to focus on two of those elements, which would be the business continuity element and the attracting you know, the staff that the MSMEs need to be able to, getting their businesses to be able to move them forward. And, and also to be able to make sure that the business owners themselves are sufficiently covered to support both of the two. Yes. So let's start. So we have two, two, well, three structures that exist that support us being able to achieve those two objectives. So 
um, a structure called Group Health and Group Life support um, the objective regarding making sure that you have, you know, you're providing the sort of benefits to be able to pull in um, good quality employees, to keep good quality employees. And I know a number of, of, of entities um, do experience this sometimes. So maybe, for example, you know, they're, they're up and coming and they might not be able to afford the big, big, big salary that, say, you know, a, 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 a large company might be able to provide right there are some things though that they may be able to do to recruit and to pull in the sort of persons that they need to be able yeah. to to be able to come stay on board with them and to sort of grow with them right and so these 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 structures allow that so group health for example allows those entities to be able to provide sim simple language a health card for the people them that work yeah. for for the people them that own the business, it is available there for you too, right? And it is it is so organized that um, you could have two businesses that have the same number of staff, Rochelle, that um, you, maybe their financial arrangements might be slightly different, but who have two different sets of plans because one wants X out of the plan and the other wants Y. So for example, you could have one that says, listen, in the event of, of, of certain types of things, you know, we will cover 100% of the cost of the medical visit or yes. the dental and optical up to a particular amount, you know, um, we will cover, you know, 80% of the cost of drugs and so on and so forth. Those things are super important to somebody who is looking to work for an MSME, Yeah. And so I would encourage them to take a look at it. It's it's very simple because it's not one, it's not something for, for businesses that employ, you know, 200, 300, 400 people. Uh, guys, this is something that a business with five people, 10 people, you know, mm -hmm. can take advantage of. So it's, it's not difficult. And when you think about it, think about the business risk side of it now. So say you have either yourself as the business owner or one of your key staff they become you know ill as a result of whatever the issue might be yes if it is that they don't have the ability to be able to cover those particular illnesses you lose you lose the time that costs your business if it's you and you have a major illness you're talking about significant resources that you would have otherwise to find from your own pockets now, if anything tell if anything teaches you if, if 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 COVID taught us nothing, it's that we need to make sure that we have the mitigation elements in place, right? Because what may happen is that that impact may come at a time when mm -hmm. the business might not be able to absorb um, um, the effect of dealing with that particular issue, and you can't have the business die because the owner of the business or some key person in the business is battling an, an illness um, um, or a health issue, shouldn't be that way. You should be yes. able to continue your business in the normal way. And so these structures help to support that, yeah? And before we go on, Antonio, um, I, I'm, I'm glad you touched on the, the owner of the business, you know, battling some kind of health issue um, and un, unable to function. <laughs> Yeah. You know, even um, the consideration of, of group life. Um, and earlier in the program, I talked about sometimes insurance agents call us and stuff and we are high them. Or we say, okay, I'm bother with that right now. Not one neck, I'm not paying one more thing for the month. Um, but insurance is one of those things that, you know, you, and especially life insurance, you pay it while you're living. Mm -hmm. But the benefit of it is 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 for your 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 beneficiaries yes. that you leave behind, mm -hmm. and you know sometimes you know just in the cut and thrust pandemic, all of these things that we're just I can't I can't parcel that thought process in right now. I've got some real things thinking about for something like even group life. How real is it that we should be thinking about, especially when we are running small businesses and and we are the business pretty much. Yeah. Okay, so great point. And the truth is sometimes when things do get tough, it is a matter of 
organizing, you know, sort of what your priorities are, right? So in the case of group, in the case of group life, Rochelle, you know, we have a range of services that include both the coverage for life, but also provides living benefits. So they provide things like critical illness components if an MSME wants that structure put in place. You have elements that in the event that they become injured as a result of an accident, they lose an eye, an arm, so on and so forth. You have the, the, the either a full, full payout of the face sum or a fragment of that depending on what the particular issue is. You have cases where if, if somebody becomes um, injured and unable to work, and, and by unable to work, this is whether it's a business owner or the key person, an income actually flows through for that person. So it's, it's, it is not just about the life-based component, right? And this is where the advice becomes so important, right? So as an MSME looks at the equation, what should happen is in sitting, in sitting down with us, we get an opportunity to look at crafting something that makes the most sense to them and for them. I would say that the temptation oftentimes is during the tough economic periods, the temptation is that you might want to just squeeze back on the insurance side of it, but it is a dangerous temptation to yield to. Because if you think about it, it's, it's the point at which you're most um, vulnerable economically. So if any of those things happen combined with the challenges that you face you know, within the respective business, you, you, you may be looking at complete failure of your business in addition to the respective illness or, the, or, or life issue that you may be facing. So, I mean, I've been a part of, 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 of many conversations, Rochelle, where I have had to pinch, prod, plead, beseech. And I cannot tell you how many calls I have gotten in the last over the last decade to say, boy, Antonio, I'm telling you something, boy. When you were encouraging me along this particular path, I know I fought you on it, but I am happy that you persisted until we got it done because, and then you start to hear the stories. And Rochelle, when you hear the stories, man, I am telling you, it, it, it moves you in a way that I, I cannot begin to explain. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. Wow. But we, we, just one additional point there, Rochelle. We evolved it even further than that, right? So one of the things that we recognize is that um, business persons will naturally need to be funding their businesses from time to time. And because not everybody have money like, you know, Bill Gates and Mr. Um, Amazon himself, and they will need to borrow. What we recognize is that in doing that borrowing, in the event that either that owner becomes ill or dies, that's a liability now on the business, and they are now absent the, the, the brain power, the intellectual capital, the creativity of that MSME. So we actually have a structure through what we call group credit life, where it is that that yes. MSME is we have, a, we have a slide that, that shows it while you're talking about it. So we could move, yes. Yes, no, no issue. So, so, so that benefit covers in the event that that business owner either dies or becomes ill and so on. So, so what would in fact happen there is, mm -hmm. let's say for example, looking at illness, it would pay out the line of credit completely, completely. So the business is freed up of that liability. The owners of the business have the opportunity to have whatever asset it is that it is that, that that for which the loan was taken, or if it's unsecured, have it cleared from their books, and be able to focus on running the business and also battling whatever issue it is that the respective owner is dealing with. Right? So so when you look at that, you're talking about when you're talking about business continuity and using an insurance framework to be able to help your business actually move through very tough periods. That's what I'm talking about. That is what we're talking. And as, as we're on this, I see Mags. Hi, Mags. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome. 
Max says the problem of insurance with micro-sized business. And Max says actually no group insurance for micro-sized businesses. Any suggestions? Yeah, man. So, so we have a structure that allows us to be able to look at businesses that are five employees or more, right? We have structures as well to support just the mom and pop shop. So where it is just two or three people, right? Now, some may not, once it's five and above, then we'll be able to get it looked at within the context of group insurance. But we also have recognized that you may have those that may just be a little bit below that. And we have some, you know, solutions that will be able to support those persons too. Okay. And Bevel, hi, Bevelin. Bevelin says, hi there, Max. Bevelin says, if the underwriters do not approve, what can you do to get health insurance? Okay. So again, this is one of the beautiful things with being part of a group right wow. so typically when you are part of a broad group so let's say you know 10 people 15 people whatever the case might be you will be able to benefit from that entity having that group health or group life cover and so an individual would have to undertake their own they would have to be underwritten on their own but because you're part of a group, you benefit from the experience associated with being a part of that larger group. So the risk around the particular life gets spread because you have more persons, if you will, partaking in that risk by virtue of the premiums that would be that would be payable for that cover. So if you have, um, for example, if you're if you're employed or 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 an employer and you you know you have 5 10 15 people in your shop then this is a good way to ensure that you have that cover secured for yourself take advantage of that group structure plus it is cheaper too by virtue of the fact that the risk is is displaced so take advantage of it okay thank you for that antonio and antonio you've listed here some benefit to businesses of 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 considering insurance not just considering actually insuring and, and providing some of these benefits. Yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, you know, it at the very heart of the thing, as I said, Rochelle, are the people, both, yeah. the, both the owners of the business and the employees. I know a lot of great businesses and in order for them to, you know, get to that next level, they have to make sure that they both get and, and, and recruit good quality staff and keep them and an employee benefit structure is a great way to do that sometimes you know the benefit that you provide might be better value to some people than the raw salary itself this mark you it, it can't too far I'm just gonna say. Right. yeah but but you're gonna need you're gonna you're gonna need it yes if if you 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 want to be an employee of choice and you have your key staff and you recognize that you have the risk in the event that something happens to them and all businesses have that risk i assure you make sure you get it set up it's 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 cheaper than you trying to find it yourself yeah. as a business owner or trying to find a way to pass out the money to give to them when them come to you and say boss you know say me have xyz you know i'm gonna need that money from the business company i work here so now four five six years what i going for me mm -hmm. right similarly you know in the event that something happens to the person them they're, they're 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 working for you they die in the course of the duties the beneficiaries are going to come to you and sort it out get rid of that right have a structure in place your staff are going to be lifted by it and i mean you have some elements that carry some tax exemptions for the employers i mean we didn't get a chance to touch the pensions today because we we're talking hardcore insurance and you know i love the pension business right but um there are those benefits for the employers um but but as i said if, you, if you're really looking at it if you want to ensure that you have business continuity if you want to move your business from 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 one level to the next if you want to take away some of the risk associated with and concentrated with the owners and the key persons in your business you want to make sure that you have these structures in place yeah all right as simple as that and when we when we put these structures in place, sometimes as business owners, we 
we get fired up, we get a policy, we take it and we put it in the drawer, we know we have the policy, we don't want to look back on the policy, we don't really check up, we know sometimes we need a little upgrade, you know, how things kind of move. In terms of, of that part of the business continuity, um, any advice that you would give us? Sure. Um, it is it is about typically we recommend that the a review is done once each year. And as a matter of fact, we have um, three experts um, that, that that I have in my team, Rochelle. And when I'm telling you that they're ready to make sure that we hold our business owners' hands and kind of guide them through. Put the slide so we can write down, we can write. Yeah, man. Yeah, take a picture of the slide. Next yes, slide, um, the um, producers. Talk to us more. Right. Yeah, so as we say, it's as easy as one. <laughs> have Vanessa Campbell Garrix's number, two, Alvin Campbell's number, and three, I don't know how Kirk's number got trimmed here, you know. Kirk, if you're hearing me, forgive me, boss. All right, but 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 no, my staff, Rochelle, are phenomenal. They have done this for a number of entities um, in the country. Um, we, we, we pride ourselves on the relationships that we build with customers. And we know that it is not the, the journey of protecting a business and protecting um, the staff in that business is not one that we take lightly. And so those recommendations do come from time to time. Um, and we also take feedback for, from, our, from our, our businesses. So they may say to us, hey, listen, I currently have a health plan with, you know, XYZ company. I'm really not, I mean, it's not bad, but can I get some better value from this? Can I get some better benefits? Or times are tough. Can we get the premiums at a slightly less expensive, you know, rate? Is that something that we can look at? No problem there, right? It's, a, it's just a matter of the conversation. It's as easy as one, two, three, as easy as one, two, three, as easy as one, two, three. And yeah, you know, our key people are there to be able to, to take that conversation forward. But we want to take care of them. We want to take care of them real good. And so we want to start that conversation. So, you know, Antonio, our viewers um, have heard you and we, we believe you. And we, but so, what about those people who are saying, but these are big NCB, you, you, you know, you're not going to want all my little piece. And my little, my little company, it is one little piece of company. Rochelle, look here, man. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. There is no company too small. Rochelle, I have, I have had some good relationships with, um, with persons from the Small Business Association coming back years. And I remember a couple of them, you know, we met up by, you know, one of the persons that served as their mentors. And if, and if any of those persons listening now, they'll probably be chuckling, right? And I remember them coming to me and them saying, boy, you know, they had some challenges and they had a similar concern. Boy, you know, NCB not going to really pay my thing. It's only, you know, five people work at my place and no man I'm the only business with, you know, this type of business and that type of business. I said, well, okay. I, I can understand that you are concerned about that, but no issue. I am here to make sure that that opinion changes. And Rochelle, I can't tell you the number of very good friends I have now that came out of that little association that we had. And I'm telling you, I appreciate them so much because they in turn connected me with a lot of people that had that same opinion. And by the time we had a chance to really embrace them and understand their needs because their needs will will, will vary and and but, but you know the one thing i love is being able to watch as they evolve and i take great pride in knowing that we played a part in that evolution and that's something i enjoy and looking forward to oh thanks a lot for that antonio and as we're wrapping up with antonio you know antonio has given us um has taken us also on a journey on looking at a different aspect of our business the people part of our business i would know said the business is people build the business and antonio you know as you were speaking a while ago i just it's just a reminder that all big business did start out small little bit little bit 
so as, as we are wrapping up and persons are now processing and knowing that they have some decisions to make in regard to insurance for themselves and their people, what, what, um, what would you leave our viewers with tonight? Okay, I would, I would, leave, with a very, I would leave almost the way I started, um, Rochelle, to keep it simple. We, we have a, don't think that your business is too small. Don't think of yourself as insignificant, right? I mean, very, very strong businesses have come through a mom and pop setup. We, we, I mean, Jamaica is replete with that, right? Start with a conversation. So come in, let's have a conversation about what you want. It doesn't have to look like whatever anybody else wants, just what you want. We're gonna start there and then based on what you want we can provide some guidance to make sure that whatever you end up with is something that is truly representative of where you are and then we want to also be able to grow with you so once you start that is just the beginning of the journey your businesses are fantastic we have super bright people super industrious persons and I know that all some of those persons need is just good advice and a partner that they can trust and depend on that they know will serve them through thick and thin. And, and that's what we want to do. So come in. Let's talk. Let's talk and get the journey going. Let's talk and get the journey going. Thank you very, very much, Antonia Spence, Senior Assistant, General Manager and Head Pensions, Client Management and Business Development, NCB Insurance Agency and Fund Managers. Always a pleasure, Antonio. Thank you and stay Thank you. safe. Thank you so much, Rochelle. <laughs> Viewers, what an evening. We have had two experts in their field who have broken down insurance for us. We've looked at, at business insurance. We've looked at the people part of the insurance, insuring ourselves as the business people, insuring our people. And I'm sure that you've left here with a lot more information. We've heard from Christian Watt, General Manager, Marketing and Production, Iron Rock Insurance. We've heard from Antonio Spence, Senior Assistant General Manager, at NCB Insurance Agency and Fund Managers. And I know a lot of information and some of it you're like, I, I wasn't able to process it and I, I, I need, where, where can I find this? Is it written anywhere? If you are not yet registered and signed up for our weekly memo, please email us at sme at psoj.org. If you've missed our previous memos, Go right, you know, right, tap, 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 and go right now to smallbusinessportal.com. We are at episode 62. So that means that there's a wealth of information on, I mean, topics galore, and we have much more to come with. We are here every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. We are here to serve you as our micro and small businesses. As we were talking about with Antonio, every business start out small with an idea that has germinated. All of these large businesses that we see, we want to be a part of your growth journey. And as we're recovering from COVID, we're thinking growth now. We're thinking next phase. We're thinking next steps. How have we pivoted? How are we protecting our businesses? How are we managing insurance? And as Christian Watt told us, insurance is a cog in that wheel. So lots of great information. Again, beg you, go on smallbusinessportal.com. Take some time, read through the memos. Follow us on YouTube, PSOJ, Access to Finance. Follow us on Facebook. Make sure you set that timer to join us every week. Follow us on Instagram right about now so that you can keep informed. And as we put up various business tips that you are right at the cusp and the cutting edge, the PSOJ, the Private Sector Organization of Jamaica, is here to serve you. We're talking growth, growth, growth. Next step, bigger, bigger, bigger. And... This is an investment in you, our small businesses, by NCB Group and the JMMB Group. So thank you again for joining us. As Beverly says, thank you to the speakers. Very informative. See you again next week. Remember, COVID still a keep. Wear your mask, sanitize, social distance, pay attention, protect yourself, 
protect your business. See you again next week for another episode of COVID Cast JA Business. So you have a great idea to start a business, but you don't know where to start. We completely understand. You have a lot of questions and almost no answers. Smallbusinessportal.com is here to help. At smallbusinessportal.com, you gain access to information on loans, grants, and investment opportunities from verified financial institutions. Guess what you also get? Useful business tips, access to training, all these services combine to make your business idea into a reality. Start your journey today at smallbusinessportal.com.